Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm remaking a previous video that I filmed a couple of years back about how to design and make a custom card from scratch for free in Cricut Design Space. The biggest complaint I got in that video is that I didn't show the final project actually cut out on your Cricut and completed. So I will show you in this video how to actually cut and make the project as well. So if you're new to Cricut and you've never used Design Space before and you're trying to figure out how to make a card, this video is for you. All right, let's get started. In Design Space, you'll want to choose a new project up in the top right hand corner. So go ahead and click on new project and that will bring you to a blank canvas. Your canvas is just that. It's a blank space for you to design your project on like an artist would paint on a canvas. If you think about a card, I have a card to show you here. The size of the front is really just a rectangle and then whatever orientation you want it to open, if you want it to open up to the top or to the side, that's how you're going to decide the orientation of your score line. So if we look at this card, this is about four inches tall by five inches wide. So we can draw our rectangle to represent that. So on the left hand side on your toolbar, you have these shapes here. Go ahead and click on that and choose a square that we will unlock to turn into a rectangle. To select your object to bring it onto your canvas, select it and it will automatically pop up onto your canvas. You can see the default size is two inches by two inches, but we can change that to be whatever size we want. I have my square selected and at the top, the dimensions are represented up here in inches. So two inches by two inches. I want you to unlock the padlock so that we can change those and scale it, not proportionately. So I'm going to make my width five inches and my height four inches. So I want my card to open vertically. So I want it to flip open like this. So if I want that to happen, I need the height of my card to be doubled. So instead of being four inches tall, I want it to be eight inches tall. So to represent that, I'm going to skew it to be eight inches tall. So now I just have a long skinny rectangle. I also want a score line in the middle of that card so that I can tell my Cricut to score it. If you don't have a scoring stylus or a scoring wheel, you don't need it. You can just score it by hand with a bone folder or a pen cap, something to give it a score line or simply just fold your card in half using the good old pinch method. Since I do have a scoring tool, I'm going to add a line in the middle of my card right across like this. So to do that, we're going to click on the shapes icon here and up at the top, there is a score line option. So we're going to click on that and bring it over to our card. So I'm just dragging it. I want it to be as wide as my card. I know that the width of my card is five inches. So I'm going to type in five at the top. I'm not going to type in five at the top. I'm going to type in the height as five. <laughs> Try that again. And then I need to rotate it to rotate it. Bring it over here. If you hover around your image, so you can see kind of as I hover around it, I get this little curved cursor. And if I click on my trackpad or my mouse and I rotate it, I can turn it. If you don't want to freehand turn it, you also can rotate it up at the top by using this rotate, rotate option here. And I'm just going to type in 90 degrees to get it to turn exactly 90 degrees. Now I have a horizontal line across my project. I don't have to eyeball it. I can actually highlight both of the images together. So I'm going to grab my cursor and highlight over everything. So you can see that the line is selected and the rectangle. And I'm going to click on the align function up at the top, click on that and choose center. That will perfectly center my line onto my rectangle. At this point, I almost have my card base done, but if I were to choose make it, my score line would not stay attached to my card base. So I'll show you what I mean here. When I click make it, we're going to be using a mat for this project. My score line is on this mat and my card base is on this mat, but I want them to be together. So cancel out of that. And to prevent that from happening, we're going to highlight 
both of those together. And at the bottom here, we're going to choose attach. Now, when you click make it, you can see that my card and my score line are on the same project mat. And that is what I want. The colors in Cricut Design Space represent the project materials you will be using. So for this Christmas holiday card that I'm making, I want to have just a plain white card base. So to change the color to represent the project materials I'm using, select the image that has the color. So I'm just going to select the square and you can actually change this to be named something else. So if you click on where it says square, I can say card base. So now when I refer to this layer, I'm going to call it the card base. So select your card base and at the top, you can choose the different colors, material colors. And I just want it to be a white card. Now I know that's a little bit more difficult to see on our canvas. So if you want to change your canvas color, you can select it down here where it says blank canvas, click on that. And you can actually change your canvas color to be a contrasting color so that you can see your project a little easier. All right, so I have my card base. Now let's add a fun design to the front of the card. On the left-hand side, you can navigate over to images and you'll land on something that looks like this. If you don't see something that looks like this and you see something that looks like this page, at the top left, you can click on all images and then you can choose free. Or if you see here, you can also click on the filter free. So once again, if you see you're on this page, I'm going to click on the free option here. The free option does change depending on when you're in design space. So it's really just a motivation to get you into design space and get crafting. So what I show you as free right now may not be free when you're watching this video, but you will have a different set of free images. So I'm going to click on free and you can see that there's 3001 free images right now. Again, these images can change, but right now, as of December 6, 2022, these are the free images in Design Space. So you can scroll through and choose whatever designs you'd like. Or at the top, you can search what you're looking for. So if we want to do a holiday card, I have 189 options for holiday cards. Okay, so you can choose whatever image you want. If you wanted a specific holiday, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year, you could also search whatever holiday you're looking for. So here is a Merry Christmas sentiment and I'm going to choose this one here. So we'll click on that. And when you select an image, you can select multiple images at the same time. So if you select this image and this image down at the bottom, you can see that those are selected. If you want to delete one of them, you can just hover over and delete it. So I'm going to choose this Merry Christmas sentiment and add it to the canvas. It will come in the default color, but you can change it to be whatever color you want. So if you want to match a color of paper that you have, so let's toggle on the advanced option and choose a deep red. I think I have a deep red cardstock, so something like this. Again, the colors only represent the materials that you're cutting. It will not be that color unless you print it out. So I'm going to choose this red. And I actually like the size of the image. To add a little interest, I'm going to add an offset layer. So at the top, you can choose offset. And then the distance around your offset, you can see here, I can toggle the slider and it will create a bubble like image around my words. And then that way I can add a different color layer and my lettering on top of that, which I think would give it a really fun look. So I'm going to add an offset this size. And I don't like that little cutout that's showing right there. So this is getting a little bit more advanced, but not too difficult. We're going to click the contour window right here. And I'm just going to select that so that it deletes out. So you can see when it's selected, the cutout is visible. And when it's deselected, it is invisible. So now I have a perfect shadow layer around the back. And you can change this to be whatever color you want. I really want to do like a fun gold on top of like a red, but I don't think I have a gold card stock. Okay, so again, I have my colors kind of selected to match the materials that I have chosen. So I have my red card base, 
my green shadow layer and my white Merry Christmas sentiment. I'm not sure about it since I'm going to be writing on the inside of the card. It might be a little difficult to read if I have a red card base. So we might be going back to white. Okay, back to white because I'm going to write inside the card to show you how to write inside a card. So we're just going to do Merry Christmas. That's a little hard to read. All right, we'll figure it out. I do want to show you how to write inside of the card. So I have my Merry Christmas design that will be glued onto the front of our card, but I want to write a message on the inside of the card. So I'm going to now visualize this card. If we look at my visualizer, I have my card and on design space, it's laying like this. Now picture it like this, where it's, we're looking at the inside of the card and we're going to write our text inside this layer here. So then it closes up and we have our text inside. So our message will be right here. So I'm going to add a text box. If you click on this text icon here, we can type out whatever we want. So Merry Christmas, you can type out a full sentiment and then love the halls. Now something new that's well relatively new in design space is that when you adjust your width, it actually will move your text down. That is a new function, believe it or not. And it, it's, it's so helpful. And the text will stay the same size, but it will adjust the kerning. If I want to decrease the font size, I can toggle down the font size here and just adjust it until it fits into the card size that I want. And you can see that as I decrease the font size, it's adjusting the layout. So if I want to squish over the text like I had it, I can just move that over. And then if I want to add some spacing between my Merry Christmas and Love the Halls, I can adjust that to look however I'd want. Now this concept is a little difficult to grasp when you're first starting out. So if I were to try to write this, it follows the cut path. So if I were cutting this out with a vinyl or a paper, it would cut around the outside edge of my text. That's important to note because if it were to draw it, they would be bubble letters. So if I change the style or the operation rather, so the operation up here, if I change it to the pen, you can see there's bubble letters and there's nothing wrong with bubble letters. If you like the look of bubble letters, then you can absolutely just have the bubble letters. But if you want it to look like it's drawn, I'm using the free font Cricut Sans. Not all fonts have a writing style unless they're Cricut fonts. So Cricut Sans is a free Cricut font. It's actually one of my favorite free fonts and it does have a writing style. So if I choose style and choose writing, so you can see that it changes it to a single line font and then I can tell my Cricut to draw this out. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use this font and I'm going to change the operation to the pen tool. And now I can see that my Cricut will write this text out. Again, you can type as long of a message as you want and format it to fit in to the card and it will look exactly how you design it. A couple of other things to note, on the fonts, if you don't want to use this free font and you want to choose a different one, if you filter to the Cricut fonts, I can filter further and choose fonts that have a writing style. All of these fonts have a writing style. Blush Font Co. is one of my favorite font artists and she has a ton of fonts that have writing styles. You can see here that they do cost money if you're not an Access subscriber. If you're a subscriber, those are included in your subscription. But if you're not, it will cost you a one-time payment of $4.99 and then that font will be yours forever and you can use it as much as you want. You do not pay $4.99 every time you cut that font. But since we're using the free, I'm going to make sure that my filter is on free. And then all of these fonts are included. And if I want to do free and writing, I have these four fonts to choose from. So I still have options if I want to do free. If you use a system font, you can see here that those filters are not available because your system fonts probably do not have a writing function that works in Cricut. You can use a single line font, but those are a little more difficult. And I will show you a video that goes over that 
more advanced, I'll link that in the video description if you are curious about that. So for our tutorial, we are keeping it simple. We're using Cricut Sands and it has a writing style already and we're good to go. Similar to the score line, we need to tell Cricut that we want this draw layer attached to our card base. So I'm going to highlight both of them. So you can see here that the Merry Christmas is highlighted and then my card base and the line are all highlighted. And I just did that by dragging my cursor over everything. So I'm highlighting everything. Or you can select the layer, hold down your shift key on your keyboard, and then select all the things that you want highlighted. With everything highlighted, I'm going to align to the center horizontally. And then I don't want to center it completely because it would be in the middle of my card. So that looks good to me. I'm going to attach everything together to hold it all together. Now you can see I have these three items attached together. And when I click make it on a mat, I have my card base, my score line, and my text. And then I have my two other sheets of cardstock that will cut out separately. So this is looking great. Score, I have my pen tool and my cut. We're not ready yet. We still have some more steps to go. So I have my card and then I would glue this on the outside. Of course, every card needs an envelope. So we're going to find an envelope to fit our card. So back over on the image tab, we're still filter to free. We're in the free category, but if you want to toggle on the free option, you can also choose that. And now I'm going to search envelope. I want an actual envelope that will fit my card. So I have a couple of options. It looks like I have this one and this one. So I'm going to choose this one because I like how it looks. So we'll add that to the canvas. You can see here that the envelope is really small and I need my card to fit inside of it. So I'm going to grab a shape to represent my card, fold it in half. So again, when my card looks like this folded in half, it's about four inches by five inches. So I'm going to resize my square to be four by five. So here's my card and I want my envelope to fit in inside of that. So I'm just grabbing the envelope and resizing it. It's locked so that it won't change or skew the proportions. And then I can see how big I need to make my envelope. So we'll just keep on going until my envelope has a little bit of room around my card. If you need to skew it out of proportion, you can unlock the proportions and then you can actually resize it so that you can get a closer fit. I do want it to fit a little loose. So I don't want it to be perfectly fitting my four by five. I want it to have a little border just like this. So that actually looks great. I can delete my reference rectangle and I have my envelope here. Okay. I do want to rotate my envelope. My envelope is going to be white. So we can change the envelope color to be white by selecting the envelope. This is the envelope score line. So I'm going to rename that so that you can see what's happening. I'm going to select my envelope and change it to white since that's the color I'm using. Next, let's rotate our envelope 90 degrees so that we can add our addresses on it. So here's my envelope. And I'm going to assume that this is the bottom flap and this is the top flap. So now I have it 90 degrees and I'm going to add my addresses. I do have a tutorial on printing addresses on your envelopes that is way easier in my opinion, but if you want to use your Cricut, you can use the same concept and add text to the outside of your envelope. So I'm going to do that. We'll do Carly Hall and my address, one, two, three. I of course live on Cricut Lane and we'll say South Jordan since that's where their headquarters are. And I'm going to resize that and fit it into the upper left-hand corner. To make a copy of this quickly, I can just duplicate it right here. And now I can add the recipient's information in the middle of the card. And this is gonna to go to Shelby Jones. 
and she lives a little further away on 875 Maker Way, but also in South Jordan. Okay, I can just eyeball this, or if I want to highlight both Shelby's address and the envelope, I can align them center if I want to be precise. You can also change the style of the alignment. So if I wanted it to be justified left, I could change it. I like the way center looks, but you can adjust these to be however you want. Once you're happy with your placement of your return address and your recipient's address, we're going to highlight everything. So I have Shelby's address, my address, and the envelope, and we're going to attach those together. All of those layers with the text are in the operation pen and the style writing. So I have all of those as writing layers. I'm going to save this. Now we are ready to make it. So I'm going to click make it. And you can see here that my envelope is on one layer. So I'm going to need two sheets of cardstock, white cardstock. And then I have a red cardstock and a green cardstock. So everything looks really great. If everything looks good to you, we can click continue in the bottom right hand corner. And then I'm using a Cricut Maker 3, but you can do this on whatever machine you have. So you'll want to choose the material that you are using. I'm using a medium cardstock. And then it will tell you the tools that we're loading in. So it looks like first we're going to load in our pen. Then it recommends the single scoring wheel. And then we will cut with our fine point blade. I mentioned that if you don't have certain tools that you can hand score or you can use a scoring stylus. So at this point, you need to tell the Cricut what tools you're using. So if you have the scoring wheel, I have my little tool kit right here. So the scoring wheel is part of the quick swap family. So if you have the single scoring wheel, you'll just load it onto the quick swap quick swap housing and it looks like this. It's just a little wheel that will score. So this would be my number one recommended for card making. But if you don't have that, there also is a scoring stylus, which works pretty well too. So you can use this, or if you don't have anything, you don't have to load a tool at all. If you don't have a stylus, which I'm going to assume for the purposes of this tutorial that we don't have anything, we can click edit tools and choose scoring stylus. And then we will just not load in a tool at all. So if you don't have anything, when I load in our tool, just don't load it in and you'll be just fine. You'll, you'll score it by hand or just fold it without, without a crease at all. Okay, so let me get my maker in view. So I have my adhesive mat and the way that these cutting mats work is they're sticky to hold down your material while you're cutting them or scoring or drawing on them. And then I have a sheet of cardstock. I'm going to use the smooth side of my cardstock to draw on because the textured side will give it just that a little bit of texture. So I'm going to load the textures, textured side face down onto my cutting mat and just align it into the left corner and the right corner and then smooth it out onto my mat. So now the textured side is down and it's secured onto my cutting mat. I'm going to put it into my Cricut machine and while still holding onto the mat, so I'm pushing it up against the rollers, I'm going to click the load button. If you have a scoring stylus, at this point, you're going to load it into your machine. Well, after it runs this little test here. Right now it's measuring to make sure I put in the correct size material. So I have my scoring stylus. If you do not have a scoring stylus, just ignore me here, don't load anything in. But if you do, you're going to load it into clamp A, push it down until you hear a little click and then clamp it into place. Okay, the light will flash at you and you're ready to go. So next you'll see that it prompts you to load in your pen that you're going to be drawing with. Just going to test on the bottom corner to make sure my pen works. And then I'm going to unload my scoring stylus and load in my pen the same way. So I'm just gonna 
hold clamp A, push down until I hear a click, and then close the clamp, and then click the go button once again. I forgot to mention, but my fine point blade was already loaded in the tool housing. If I had the wrong blade in the first, or the B clamp, it would stop me at this point. But since I have it loaded in correctly, it is starting to cut. So make sure to have your fine point blade in the B housing. Once it's done, I'm first going to unload my pen so that it doesn't dry out. I'm going to cap that. And then I like to store my pens tip down so that they don't dry out. And we can click the unload button. Peel our envelope off the mat. I'm going to flip my mat over and push my envelope down onto my table and peel away the mat so that my envelope doesn't bend. So we'll come back to this and now we'll load our next mat. So for the next mat, it's the same thing, white cardstock. And you can see on the screen that you're highlighted onto the white cardstock or whatever color you selected. Again, I'm loading textured side down because I want the texture on the outside of my card and I'm writing on the inside of my card. For this one, I'm going to show you with the scoring tool. So I'm going to choose medium cardstock and it says the suggested tool is that single scoring wheel. So I will show you with the scoring wheel on this one since the first one I did the scoring stylus. If you make a lot of cards, I definitely recommend the scoring wheel if you have the Cricut Maker. For the Explore series, they don't have the adaptive tool housings. So this is just maker specific. If you have a Explore machine, then the scoring stylus would be a great option for you too. Okay, so we're going to load in the pen at the same time since the scoring wheel is going to go in clamp B. So for this one, we're going to load in the pen and the scoring wheel at the same time since we don't have the stylus. So again, we'll load the pen in until it clicks and the little triangle on the front of the pen disappears. And then I'm going to set my scoring wheel onto the little shelf so I can actually remove my hands. And then I'm going to close the clamp and then load my material. So now my fine point blade is going to be off to the side while we do this first step. So I'm going to load in my cardstock. Again, it will measure out the mat to make sure I put in the right material. And then I'm going to click the go button. Right now it's detecting the scoring wheel to make sure I have the right tool in. So if I had forgotten, it would stop me and prompt me to put in the correct tool. So it's checked, it's confirmed I have the right tool. And now it's going to score first and then write my sentiment in the middle. On the screen, you can see that it's prompting me to load my fine point bladed. So I'm going to pop out my scoring wheel. And then the same way I loaded that in, I'm going to place it onto the shelf so that it's fully seated and then close the clamp. And I can actually remove the pen at this point because I'm done with that. I don't want it to dry out. So I'll cap that and then click the go button. That's all done, so now I can unload it. Once again, I'm going to flip my material over and push down the card and we'll place this off to the side and cut the next two mats. Next, it has prompted me to cut the maroon mat. For the next two mats, my maroon and my green, I want the texture up facing me because I want the texture showing when I glue it down on my card. So my texture is facing up. I'm going to select medium cardstock. And the maroon and the green mats, they are basic cuts, so I only have the fine point blade loaded in my machine at this point. So I'm going to load it in. And click the go button. Once it's done cutting, we can click unload. For this image here, you can see that there are a lot of pieces. So when we unload them, we wanna make sure to keep track of all those pieces. So gently peel away the design from your mat. It's a little bit more fragile since it's not just a big image. So I'm going to pop out the letters. And you can see they're 
pretty tiny. So place these off to the side. You can see I removed everything from this and I'm saving all of these scraps. So this can be used for several more projects. So I just have a scrap bin and I place all of those sheets that I pulled off the mats into that bin. And then our last layer is the green offset. So I'll go ahead and load up my green, select medium cardstock, load that into the machine. Okay. I have all my layers cut, so we're done with the Cricut machine. When I'm assembling my card, I like to move back to my canvas to look at the image on the screen so I have a good idea of where to glue my images. So I have my image pulled up on my screen and now we can assemble. So starting with the offset, I'm going to place my lettering onto my base layer. I wish I had a gold cardstock or a gold foil cardstock for my lettering because that would be so pretty. But for this tutorial, this works great. Now for gluing, I'm using Art Glitter Glue. It's not glitter, um, it's just, oops, the name. <laughs> Let me shake it up first. That was a little aggressive. Okay, and then now I'm just going to dot on some glue onto my project. A little goes a long way. For tiny projects like this, I don't love um, tape runners because they're just, you need a little bit more control. And this dries pretty clear, so even when I have a couple of glue spill outs, it's not the end of the world. So I'll place this onto the offset layer. I do have these little Cricut tweezers, which I love because then you can just clamp and hold while you're gluing up whatever pieces. A small little paintbrush is also helpful to smooth out the glue. All right, so I have my Merry Christmas all glued up. You can see that even with the excess glue that spilled out, not bad. And I even have a glue eraser that I can show you. Now we can work on the card part. So with the scoring wheel, you can see that it gives it a really clean score. And I scored this the correct way where you're folding into the score line. So I can just pinch those sides together and crease the fold. And it gives me a clean fold. So the scoring wheel is my favorite for scoring. And then the scoring stylus, of course I did have to score this the wrong way because normally you would fold into the score lines, but since we were addressing it, we don't have that option. So I'm going to score the wrong way, but it will be okay. So the scoring stylus also produces score lines, not as deep, not as pronounced. So you can see it's just not as clear. If you didn't have any of the tools, you would just grab your ruler and a bone folder or um, a pen, even like a Cricut pen would work. And I just use a ruler and just go along the edges so that I can score. So for this, we're going to score or fold the wrong way. Sorry, so we're gonna just fold back. And since we're making an envelope, it's not super difficult to fold these without the lines. And I think my score lines are pronounced enough to fold along. Maybe they are. So I'm just folding along those lines and giving a nice good pinch. This is a bone folder, so I like to go along my score lines and just push them down to secure them a little bit better. So I can do that the same thing on the card as well. And that just makes them lay a little flatter. All 
Okay, so now we have our envelope and we're going to fold in the side flaps first and then secure it like that. All right, so our envelope is almost done. I have the back flap that we'll secure after we place our card in, but it looks like a real envelope, right? So I do have the textured side on the inside since I didn't want to write along the texture on the outside. Now we have our card. Make sure that your writing is in the middle of the card in the correct orientation and you'll close your card and we're gluing this on the outside. If you want to use a tape runner, that will work great. I'm just going to use the same glue and just kind of put it all the way around. Not the fanciest card, but you get the idea. Okay, so this is a glue eraser. I have a new one um, on hand, but if you are a paper crafter, this is another must have. So I'll show you how to use it. So it's like this rubbery thing. This one's actually a little dried out, but you just run over any spots that have glue and it literally erases them. So let me show you, see if there's a good spot to show you. So if you look like a lot around my lettering, there's just a little bit of glue seeping out. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can just run over that and it picks up all of those imperfections. So even though I'm kind of a hot mess when I'm gluing, it doesn't matter because I have a glue eraser. And you can see all the glue that it took off. It's so cool. All right, so I'm coming back to you. This is post reviewing my footage and editing. So this is editing Carly here and it's 1130 at night. And I decided to remake my card because I wasn't super proud of how it turned out. I had this idea in my head of what it would look like and it just, it missed the mark. So I decided to use still all free imagery, which I found very difficult because I'm used to using my own fonts, my own images that I upload. So being limited to those free images was difficult for me, but I made it work. I added a tree and then I added a box using the free rectangles. And I'm so much happier with how this one turned out. I did end up using iron-on, so heat transfer vinyl on my card, which will be a whole nother tutorial in itself. But I did get that gold shiny look that I was going for on black. And then inside I decided to add some slices and I wrote on the vellum to make the writing legible. So I'm much happier with how this turned out. And it's a good reminder that not all projects will be a smashing success right out of the gate and that's okay. So I, I feel like I learned that lesson a lot when I was working at Cricut as a project designer, which also I wanted to show you my profile. It's no longer active since I'm no longer an employee at Cricut, but I did have a few paper projects that I'm super proud of and it could give you some ideas on what you can make. So, and you can still follow this profile. It's on Design Space, but I won't be adding to this one because it's my Cricut old employee email. But some of the paper projects that I did, I made this happy Father's Day card and I actually gave this to my dad. And you can see here that layering pattern cardstock as a base. So your base of your card can be a pattern cardstock. You can layer it, you can add stitching to give it a little bit of detail. And then those three dimensional ties really make the card pop. And all of these techniques are what we learned today. So you can see that there's writing on the card with your Cricut pens and then the card base and the score line. All of that is what you learned today. So take all of that information and apply it to making even better cards than what I showed you today. If you scroll through my profile, I do have a, quite a few paper projects. There's a lot of other projects mixed in, but some of my paper projects there's gift tags that I love. I love making gift tags using eyelets to add a little bit of dimension. I think that's always super fun. But again, this is just cardstock and the pen tool. So exactly what we talked about today. Cricut Access is a great value because then you can get access to these projects included in your subscription and you can just customize them and make them. So all of the hard 
groundwork is laid for you and you can just make them. So anyway, I wanted to show you that I am a better designer than what you saw today. I think I was just rusty on my card making. So don't let that <laughs> persuade you not to subscribe to my channel and follow along for more crafts because even though the project wasn't exactly what I wanted, the techniques that I taught you today can be applied to so many projects. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions or feedback, please leave them in the comments below. And if you're looking for all the links, they will be in the video description. And I'll even include links to this card because I do like how this one turned out much better. And you can see that the same imagery that I used on the first card, I used in the second card. <laughs> really makes a difference on the materials that you use. So same exact imagery, just added a Christmas tree. Crazy difference. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to my channel. I promise to provide you better crafts in the future. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next video, hopefully.